Hi, Gabe. Good morning and welcome to your class in RMA 1 Research Methods in Agriculture. So for this session, while waiting for you to come in, um, we're going to continue our discussion on Module 3, which are the types and methods of research. So under uh, last time we talked about the different research designs, whether qualitative, quantitative, or explorative and so on. And we also discuss the different research types as well as its designs. So um, for now, I'll give you a sample protocol, which is very, which is very, um, we, which is very standard for a particular organiz organization. No, and we, and hopefully I can show you the survey operation sample protocols. So, this would be our last meeting and um, for session. So for the for for the remaining modules, the writing a research paper, I have posted also a video here with a discussion and also some of the sample protocol uh, research papers for publication. So um, and also the last module, which is on research presentations. I have a video on this and poster presentation. So these are just samples that you can have, uh, you can have a look and um, also have an idea of what to do on your requirements or submissions. So to start with, with the protocols used for fertilizer by bioefficacy test. So this is um, under the Fester Fertilizer and Pesticide Authority. So we call that experimental use permit. So every, this is the protocol used when every um, uh, chemical company wants to sell fertilizers or pesticides in our country and for the first time before they can distribute and sell those they need to they need to um register it in the fpa and and one of these requirements are this experimental use permit so this is a bioefficacy data generation which is a mechanism to support claims on the effectiveness of a fertilizer. And the claims on effectiveness and direction of use will appear on the label and brochures. And a traditional inorganic fertilizers are exempted like the 14, 14, 14. So they are already exempted because they are very traditional. Or um, traditional organic fertilizer must be fully registered with FPA in the market for seven years already, tested in any of these three major crops, such as rice, corn, sugarcane, and other three crops for two seasons each. So another uh, aspect of experimental use permit is for application of this EUP, it should be submitted one month before the conduct of the actual test. So you should wait for the approval of your EUP before you're going to conduct the experiment. So the notice of approval is, or disapproval after 15 days from application will be given from FPA. And this must be conducted by FPA accredited researchers. So like me, I'm also an accredited fertilizer FPA researcher. So. Uh, we've gone on, we've, we have a license for that. So we have an ID with our license and uh, we have undergone trainings for that and also examination. And we like the PRC, we are also um, renewing our license and updating through symposiums every now and then. So this is uh, the FPA Accredited FPA researcher is only allowed five experiments at a given time, and they are not allowed to conduct their own in their own company, you know, for for the conflict of interest. And EUP is valid only for one growing season for testing a crop, which may be extended upon request. Eh, halimbawa, hindi pa natapos yung study, so you can actually 
request for an extension. So the FPA field people will monitor the experiments and sign the terminal report. So for the timetable for fertilizer EUP processing, so this is the, the flow from the FPA accredited researcher and they are going to register it into FPA and then evol uh, evaluation of core or from the evaluator. And um, they will also test for chemical analysis. And then there will be a, a visit on the experimental use permit. And the, the field experiment after that will have the terminal report. So again, they're going to visit before installation, during, and also at harvest. And then the, the, the PEDOS will attest the report. So this is an example of an EUP permit application. So, and this is also approved one. No, well, this is actually under my name. So for the protocol, this is what they do. Um, the experimental for that, you should able to identify the experimental conditions. So first the site description includes the location, the hydrology, the slope, the soil type, the topography and also description of the products and standards and the selection of crop variety. So it could be any variety commonly grown in the region. And also the trial conditions, whether irrigated or non-irrigated field, a number of trials depends also on the crop. So the design and layout could be uh, the ANOVA or RCBD for field and CRD for nursery for at least three replications or an error degrees of freedom for at least 10. No? And so analysis is based on trials on fertilizer should be done on a deficient soil and others. And for the plot size depends on the crab. So for a lowland rice, it could range from 16 to 20 square meter or in upland rice, 16 to 25 for corn and other cereals, 16 to 25 and vegetables, 10 to 16, legumes, 16, cucurbit, 16, root crab, 16, forage, 16, turf. So 2.5 fairway by 3.6 greens and sugar cane, five by seven or six by nine. And for mango, one fruit bearing tree per treatment per replication using four quadrant to two by four replications. So one by four is to four. And for ornamentals, three plants in five sample, sampling sites per plot of at least 15 square meter or per treatment per replication times three replication or three by five by three. And for tobacco, 26. For a fish pan, 500 square meter per treatment times two or more replication. So a four quadrant per three, if possible, with sampling units, 25 randomly selected buds or quadrant for a total of 100 flowering buds per three. So if not, state the sampling units. So for the second one, which is application of treatments, the test product should uh, where it, which is the formulated product under investigation in different treatments and the reference products should be included or the registered product accepted as conventional fertilizer commonly used by farmers such as complete, incomplete, single fertilizer uh, such as the urea, ammonium sulfate, sulfates, and moiety of water, sulfate, and so on. And also you indicate the mode of the mode type and time of application and always comply good agricultural practice or GAP and apply based on the product's recommended type and time of the application. And also the date of each application should be recorded. So ito na yung mga different protocols, for example, for granular and soil applied inorganic soil and foliar applied liquid fertilizer or by fertilizer or organic fertilizer. So it should contain the first treatment should be controlled. So ito lang yung standard protocol ng EUP permit for FPA, no? Kasi you have to have a standard treatment. So for example, 
uh, for treatment protocols, you should always have control or no application. Second should be the recommended rate based on soil analysis. So you're going to conduct a soil sampling and analysis. And three, third is the one half of this recommended rate based on soil analysis. The fourth one is the 100 recommended rate of the soil analysis plus the recommended rate of the new product. And the fifth is only the recommended rate of the new product. And six is the combination of both. So for, uh, it's, it's just the same, almost the same, no? No, um, with some other treatment protocols, but for, this is for granular and soil applied. But if it is fully are or soil applied micronutrients, soil amendment or conditioner, it's different. Now at first, or almost the same, but meron siyang kaibahan. In here, we have the control, of course. The second is the recommended rate based on soil analysis. The third one, which is different here, no, is the recommended rate plus the half of the new recommended rate of new product. And fourth is the recommended rate of soil analysis plus the recommended rate of the new product or both. And the fifth one is recommended rate plus half of the recommend, 1.5 rather, of the recommended rate of the new product. And also the last one is the recommended rate of the new product. So for flower inducers and plant regulator naman, it's also different and there are only five treatments. We have control or water only and then recommended rate is the registered or the conventional um, um, regulator. And the th treatment three is the half of the recommended rate of the new product. Fourth is the full recommended rate of the new product and fifth is the one and a half recommend rate, recommended rate of the new product. Of course, the mode, the type, and the time of application should be based on the manufacturer's recommendation. Hi, Gabe. Sorry, nag, uh, nag start na ko to utilize the time. Because I'm not sure if you can make it. So, um, I am discussing now. Hi, Gabe. Can you hear me? Hello, Gabe. So while uh, you are still adjusting for your um, for your voice, no? Okay, so or makadungog ka, but di na ko magdung imo audio. So I'm I'm actually discussing the protocols for fertilizer bioefficacy test in um in the experimental use permit for for fpa research no so why i chose this kasi as a sample protocol uh kasi you'll be doing your methodology na so you need term on requirement is actually to to submit the the research proposal so i hope last time i have checked your actually your proposed your um title that topic and um if you opt for uh, an experiment because meron dalawang pwedeng um you choice no pwedeng mag uh, quantitative ka or qualitative or experimental and and survey so so for this, I am presenting to you the FPA protocols uh, because I am also uh, an accredited fertilizer uh, researcher of FPA. So it's high time. It's a uh, very timely. Now I'm. I can share this to you. So only Mom if Dean, yes, the the email lang na ko isend ang introduction or sa Google Classroom. Pwede rin i-paste ni mo sa Google Classroom. Ah, okay. Then mag-comment ra ko. So, but I prefer kung, I prefer na sa Google Classroom ni mo kaya para uh, dito pang mag-write sa Google Classroom. So, anyway, i- Copy, ma'am. Okay. So, naana ko on this page 12 out of 39. So, please just, uh, 
can uh, as once I this video will be posted, i, i review lang ang first na introduction ha. So, eto na yung treatment protocol for Cushman fertilizers, no? Una is kasi iba-ibang may iba-ibang um iba-ibang uh, kind of fertilizer, iba-iba din ang kanyang treatments supposedly yung standard na treatments actually by your own you can make your own treatment but if you became a researcher of FPA so you have to follow this protocol so ito yung treatment protocol for granular and soil applied inorganic fertilizer or foliar applied liquid fertilizer biofertilizer or organic fertilizer but then uh, before kasi ang organic fertilizer under pa ng FPA but now it's now under um, Department of Agriculture. The I think it's BAPS. You know? And this is for another treatment protocol for foliar or supply soil applied micronutrients or amendment or conditioner. And this is for flower inducer and plant growth regulator. So for fish pan fertilizer, so Again, we have control or yung no application or any farmer's practice, no? Halimbawa, merong uh, known farmer's practice. And second is the recommended rate of the inorganic fertilizer for fish fund. And the uh, third treatment is one half of the recommended rate in organic. Fourth is one half recommended rate of inorganic plus the recommended rate of the new product. And five is the full recommended rate of the new product and six, the combination of both. And for soil rejuvenator naman, for fish pan, you only have three treatments, control and the recommended rate or based on conventional practice. And three is the combination of treatment two and the recommendation recommended rate of the new product. So if it is liquid fertilizer, other liters based on volume of water in a treatment pan is stated and if you have a decomposer you know like trichoderma no as a decomposer so these are the different treatments you have control second is the recommended rate of the decomposer to be registered with fpa or already registered with fpa so i compare ni mo sa conventional or sa commercial na available and third one is the new product na e so by the way, why do FPA require this EUP or experimental use permit? Because uh, as I have mentioned in the very first, uh, in the very first uh, of this video is um, before um, papasok yung mga or before na pwedeng i distribute or e e you can sell all the chemical products, no, including fertilizers and pesticides. Kailangan registered sila sa fertilizer and pesticide authority. So they are going to, kanina na present ko din yung flow ng registration and, and um, that merong a uh, series of steps to do this. And one of these are the EUP or the EUP. And, um, so for for the third one, you have to um, indicate the mode of assessment, recording, and measurements, uh, including mature, meteorological and edaphic data. So the precipitation, temperature, um, also um, you can also record the mature the the, the data from the met meteorological station nearby, and any significant change in weather or extreme weather condition should be noted kasi pwede yung i-report. Uh, like drought, heavy rain, typhoons. You know? And these are very important kasi it may affect the yield. So if you can, if uh, you can actually, if it's not really the the usual data that you get, so, but, uh, but with justification on the, meteorological data so you can say that it's because of that so now next is now you have already the methods the treatments that there are also protocols for parameters to 
to take no yung data na kukunin for example for lowland rice so you should have um average plant height at 30 days after transplanting so you're going to tag four corner hills for a total of 16 hills lahat then you're going to measure from the base of the plant to the height of the tallest leaf so that's how you're going to measure the plant height and you are going to count the tiller at 30 days after transplanting again you're going to tag 16 hills and count tillers and transform to number of tillers per square meter and then the area covered by 16 hills is 0.64 square meter and also you're going to get the weed weight the density and classification at 30 and 60 days after transplanting with point or half square meter quadrant from four replication per plot and also the plant data at harvest are average plant height at harvest ito and then the tiller count whether productive and unproductive the panel panicle count per square meter or in the productive tillers the straw weight in kilogram at harvest per five square meter and the grain yield converted na into tons per hectare and the data parameters for upland rice naman are the straw weight uh, grain weight and also, again, weed weight, density, and classification. So, ito yung parameters for upland rice. For corn naman, you have to get the number of ears per harvest area per plot, the weight of fresh ears with husk per harvest per plot, and weight of fresh ears without husk per harvest per plot. And the dry weight of kernel in two tons per hectare. Oh so you just weigh one kilo of corn kernel, sun dry for three days and get the dry weight estimation at 14% moisture before converting into tons per hectare. And the biomass weight at harvest. So for various vegetables, for leafy vegetables like cabbage, pet shy, and others, you're just going to get the marketable yield yield weight of plants into tons per hectare. So you're going to weight all the plants from the harvest area. And the fruit vegetables, the eggplant, tomato, ampalaya, and others, you're going to count the number of fruits per hectare, all the marketable and ripe fruits from the harvest area, and then the total yield data per picking schedule. So kasi for some fruits like tomato, hindi lang isang harvesting schedule yan. So, um, hanggang ma-harvest lahat yan. And weight of fruits or in, the, in terms of tons per hectare will also be a weighed in uh, every, for every picking schedule. And for coals like cabbage, cauliflower, and broccoli, you just need the weight of the marketable curd, cauliflower, or bile cluster, or broccoli in tons per hectare. And of course, the total yield from every picking schedule. And then for data for bulb, for bulb grass like garlic, so you need the plant type, the fresh weight, and the dry weight in tons per hectare. And ginger, number of pillars from uh, per 10 or 1, 1.5 square meter, and then you're going to count the tillers and weight of the rhizome. So for onion, you have plant height, fresh weight, and dry weight. And for legumes, you have fresh weight, dry weight, and weight of shelled beans in cowpea. And for soybean ah. naman and mung bean, you have the neutral count, fresh weight of beans, and bean yield. And for peanut, you have the fresh weight of pods and the weight of shelled peanut. And fresh weight, of tender pods for sweet peas and fresh weight ng green vegetable string bean for string beans or pulsita naman. So there's a lot here, no, and uh, for, for cucumbers, for kicker beets, I mean, for cantaloupe, for watermelon, and also for root grass like cassava, gabi, white potato, sweet potato, and singkama. So usually important is uh, yung mga weight and kanilang yield, no. And for other crops like forage, turf, sugarcane, so tobacco, ito yung mga proto uh, 
necessary data to take. And for mango, for example, uh, you are going to take the number of days from chemical induction to 50% flower bud emergence in one, three, four quadrants times four replication. So madami kang kukuna ng um, in just one tree. And the intensity of flowering, the number of fruits at three time size stage, and the number of fruits per panicle, and fruit yield na at harvest. So ayan, may mga classification pa. You're going to classify them into marketable fruit class and then you weigh them. And, and also the unmarketable fruit, you know, any class with defects and sweetness. So yun yung mga, mga parameters. So, and you can also, this is a sample criteria for flower intensity evaluation. You have a score one to five from none, poor, fair, moderate, and ex excellent. So from one, no flower, then few flowers up to 25%, then 25 to 50%, moderate 50 to 75%, and excellent numerous flowers all over the canopy. And for the ornamentals, these are also the following um, parameters, no? like intensity of flowering. For ornamentals, the yield and growth, and number of days of chemical induction, number of flowers per plant, and quality, number of leaves, size of leaves, but, but if it is a foliage, the weight of leaves, and the quality of the foliage. So again, if you are talking about quality criteria, you can also do uh, an example of this one for intense flower intensity evaluation. So for indoor plants, ito din naman yung mga parameters. Number of leaves, weight of leaves, size of leaves, and the quality. For fish pan naman, uh, this is again the standard protocol. No? Um, it could be init uh, initial level ng NPK, organic matter, and the pH of the pan soil. And for completely randomized design with two or more replication in 500 square meter pan size with about 3,000 fingerlings per hectare or three tilapia per square meter of fish mat. So you're also going to count the plankton no, per unit area and the fish weight sample size and the plankton count and per unit samplings hanga mag harvest. So early maturing fish by weekly and late maturing fish second, fourth, and 16th week until application ng supplementary feeds. So yung own, uh, yung company owner should submit a notice of intent to conduct the experiment, then, then information, the extent and location of research, including the location, uh, treatment, yung protocol, and crafts to be used, and other requirements. So these are actually the list of requirements. No? This is if in, in the future you are interested in um, distributing fertilizers. So, ito yung mga requirements. And also, after that, you need to have a label, a label na proposal, no? which is violet purple border, which means for FPA registration na siya. So, the basic format for fertilizer bioefficacy is it should have a title, a preliminary um, information for the sponsor, researcher, site, and duration, the rationale for introduction, including the review na, and materials and methods, cultural management, data to be gathered, references, and the field layout. And of course, the budget budgetary requirements is only for the company. No? You had to uh, include the labor costs, the inputs, the travel costs, communication costs, and professional fees. So if you became a researcher, so meron ka ding, of course, professional fees. So it would range, depending say, you know, per monthly, would range from 4,000 to 10,000, depending. And contingency, you know, just a portion or percentage of your total budget. So for the result, this result will be evaluated based on AUP approval to ensure that the treatments are followed. Then the data for showing the effectiveness of the new product should be statistically significant 
over the control. So once once you are done with your your experiment, so you're going to report your your um result, and it should be statistically significant over the control. And the terminal report should be written by the researcher within one month after harvest, and report should be endorsed to FPA or field officer in the area before the registration or the registrant or owner of the date of the new product submits to FPA central office. So always remember, these are um, um, notes, no? the sampling techniques of data gathering should be approved. The parameters to be gathered should also be described based on the protocol of EUP. And the terminal report should be submitted one month after the conduct of the study and should be accompanied with certification to the effect that the study was conducted following good agricultural practice or GAP and signed by the researcher and attested by the FPA uh, field officers who will monitor the experiment. And if accredited researchers are employed by government such as SUCs, no, they should have their research projects approved by the head or president of the concerned institution. So, ito yung, uh, once again, mahabang protocol ng FPA. So, actually, um, if you have done uh, research before, which is experimental, which is also, uh, yung, ang treatments kasi will be decided by a panel. But, um, if you become a researcher uh, accredited by FPA, so ito yung protocol na gagamitin. So the next that I'm going to show you is, it's not an, the, the first one was experimental. Ito is a survey, survey yung uh, magbibigay ka lang ng questionnaire, but I'm not going to discuss this anymore in detail. So ipapakita ko lang sa you gave. No? Um, these are, um for qualitative no for qualitative use of research so again um the types of research are could be basic research yung yung masyadong uh, say, um science math mathematics those are very basic research yung applied research yung sa agriculture naman and again, in qualitative, I, you know, survey research or social researches and quantitative researches are those na mga experimental. So we will um, deal more of a uh, survey. So for a survey, this is used for gathering information using research method and it is used to describe uh, a sample of individual or unit. So compared to census, of course, alam mo, gave kung ano ang census, di ba? Kung, kung nag, nagbibilang tayo ng, what do you call that? Population, so that's called census. Kasi yung sample, there is a complete enumeration of the elements or units of the universe or population. So straightforward counts talaga. But in a survey, the enumeration of a sample of elements per, or units of a universe or population. So this is just using sample population. And inquiries could go beyond, before, uh, beyond counting. So example na mga census, census is pag nagbibilang tayo ng population and housing, Philippine business and industry, agriculture and fisheries like ilang baka ilang ilang hektarya ng lupa ang sinasaka and so on but in survey it could be family expenditure and income survey occupational wages survey consumer expectation survey and so on tv rating survey so that's still part of an experiment no so i will not uh, discuss further the, the stages so i will just go further on the um, sa surveying um, questionnaire construction. No? 
So um, I have done one, like I have done one survey research before, a qualitative one, and it's all about um, agritourism in Samoa, its potentials and challenges. So, so um, these are some of the steps that we need to do now. And so you determine first, uh, the questionnaire content. So what are the, so first you, you need to know what are the information you need to, you, de, you need to know, or it depends on the title, of course, no, but uh, you have to first determine ano yung content ng questionnaire mo, and then organization, and then you are going to write your question na and instruction, and then compose uh, and decide the layout yung anong layout na gagawin mo syempre qualitative anong design no so um it could be like um, open if you use an open ended question or or answerable lang ba ng yes or no you know ganun and you already construct the draft questionnaire and then meron pang pre-testing na tinatawag na draft questionnaire and you can even revise, revise that if you like mag-test na kasi imuhang, I don't know if you have experience already yung mag-answer ka ng mga questionnaire and then sabihin sa yung na, na testing lang yan ma'am no so and then after that if they notice na ay may kulang pala so if you realize something then you're going to revise it and before you can produce actually the final questionnaire so Ang, ang questionnaire dapat may introduction, no? It should have the title or subject of the survey, who's the sponsor, explain the purpose, and request the response cooperation. So yung my letterhead pa yan. And the legal basis, no? Confidential nature of information. Like, um, I actually have a, a sample, no? Uh, yung, like, uh, they are going to state na kung uh, anong anong um, under law yung confidentiality ng ng mga yung sagot mo or yung information na makukuha nila sa yon so basa kasali yan and um, the introduction and conclusion of the questionnaire no must have comments section and acknowledgement of the respondent so you should always acknowledge the respondents. So, ito yung mga sample na pinagsasabi ko yun. Ito yung first is yung title or subject survey, then yung introduction, and yung conclusion nyo. Example. So, these are, ito yung sinasabi ko. There are also types of question. No? Merong mga contingency question. So these are applicable to some respondents only. It's question that is answered only if the responding gives a particular response. So contingency question, kung walang response, then, then you should avoid asking questions of people that do not apply to them. So for example, no, kailangan specific siya sa kung anong experience ng mga uh, sample or population mo na na um, survey samples population or scale question siya like um, the Likert scale by Renice Likert no it's, for example ch children must be allowed to make their own mistakes so meron kang scale question strongly agree disagree and so on so or a rating scale will be asked to the respondents to rate uh, the quality on a specific scale, like the rate the appearance of the product from 1 to 10, with 10 being the most preferred appearance. Ganon. Usually sa mga sensory, ganito, scaled question. And then matrix questions, uh, under uh, this is placed one un under the other forming matrix with response categories along top of a list of questions down to the side. So, meron siyang efficient use of page, page space and respondent time. So, ito yung example ng matrix questions. No? Besides its statements presented, please indicate whether you strongly agree or agree. So, pareho pa din siya ng rating or scaled question, but 
naka-matrix siya pag nakaganito. Or open-ended question, no? Yes or no lang. I don't know. <laughs> open-ended is uh, lalagyan ko ano talaga yung specific na sagot. No? Like, how old are you? What do you like best in your job? And so on. And of close any question, yung yes or no lang. Or you can write the letter. So meron itong mga advantages and disadvantages, but I'm not going to go further na. So those are just some of the and this are uh, some of the basic steps on how to do the survey question. So we, you also have a criteria of basic characteristic of a good question. No? and guidelines in constructing, constructing the questions. So I hope you just read from here no? if you are going to be interested in. And there's, there are also basics of interviewing kasi uh, meron ding mga um, focus group discussion no? ang tawag nila FGD. No? So there are also mga characteristic or what should be the interviewer's attitudes or basics of interviewing. So, dapat may mga dos and don'ts na dapat kang. And then when you process the data, no, and there are also um, how to how to scale or to to screen the sampling error. No? and something error, yung mga statistics forms na. And um, although most of, like, it's, depende kasi yun sa qualitative mo na approach and your design. So, uh, for, for, for instance, like this, merong statistical analysis, no? But in some also, like, open-ended question, ay, yeah, mga open-ended question, you don't have to to range them into statistical analysis. So do you have any questions, Gabe? None so far, Dean. Ang kuan ba ya, Dean, kaning nag-change ko kuan din ba kaning kaning title sa research? Yeah, it's just... Kukura kibali ako ang kuan tanom nya paa og kuan din organic ay synthetic fertilizer og organic pa so so you prefer experimental ano oo oh, oh, kibali duha ka klase nga okra synthetic fertilizer og organic pa ang ikuan sige sige and so pakikuan lang sa ko ang protocol um like Kung mo-follow ka sa FDA nga protocol na isample na rin nga research proposal na uh -oh. ni Kani. Sample na siya. Pwede ina ni una na mo. No? Inana lang siya. Six pages lang siya. Nakalagay site and duration. So, i-follow lang ni siya. No? Yes, ma'am. Nga gather ni mo. Layout. Kung okay. lang ang gamito na ko, ma'am din, murag, balde lang good. Kay Lisudi, mag-good rin ma'am din kay Ang yuta ba kinabahaan pero humo kay doon sa tulay? Yes, pwede ra. Okay. So, in um, also, sa writing man to, so, pwede na ito nakasimple like the FPA protocol. And you can also, but you are very free to do your own design. I mean, layout kung unsay gusto. Basing naakailaing layout nun, like pina, pina University of the Philippines ka or <laughs> or ka na dito ka sa uh, MSU na mga koan or CMU na mga... Ay, asa gani ka ba na? Yusef, naku, bislig ka ron ma'am din mga koy. Yusef pan ang natin ni nga university. Ay, Yusef ka nga design. So, depende na na sa imo ha? But, Oo. Ang ako lang ipa sample lang dari is ang FPA protocol kay medyo ah uh, lang siya no actually kung sa uban gani ang proposal nila is kanang kuan na siya kanang kanang 
what you call that capsule ang tawag. And even in the report no research presentation dito so na ako ay example the research paper ko lang. Na kay example na rin nga katong as ang after na ng result na points open. So after result na sa nara na. So ito na yung nana siya abstract so inani na unsa on pag report sa result no. Nana siya results and and a statistical analysis yan. So if ever naman gave halimbawa no kanang kanang naapog ko ay na ko access sa uh, statistical analysis so pwede i-analyze ra nimo sa kuha or I can also give you amut na kung ma-send ba ang installer oy. Okay, kung ma-send ba ang installer. So muna i-sample sa sa EUP report. So okay, pagkuan lang sa ko if na nakai result and then um mag-ano ka ka ng muin ka sa ko ano ma'am ang statistical analysis niya. So Tabangan ka lang ka, Ana, when you come up already with your... Pero ka nang give, ka nang dali ra mahuman nga research, ha, kay... Oo. Para masubmit ni mo. Copy, ma'am. Yeah. Nag-attempt kung ma'am din, per second, ya, sige, ulan. Sige, sige, kabagyuhan. Yuturo na po na ako. So, anyway, uh, maski walay statistic, statistical analysis in mo, ha? result if ever like halimbawa no unfinished siya and then we, kailangan na give ko mang hata grade nimo then it's it's just okay na no, kung un, un, until asa lang tapod nga portion then, okay ma'am din then you can also check on the following links on how to make the posters or the or mm -hmm. Although di takat tudluan kung saan paggamit sa PowerPoint. Kaya sa PowerPoint naman na pagibuhat o naka-PowerPoint na ganun siya. But at least you have idea what to untang poster. Unsa mag-himo o ganang nakabideo na ganyan. Nga yung mga guidelines. So you just check on the link. So hopefully mahatal na nimo sa ko ang research proposal so I can Check, no? Yes, ma'am. Maski drop. Maturo lang ito na ko, ma'am din. Okay. Sige, Gabe. Number, number, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am din. Some more concerns pa? None so far, ma'am din. Sige. So, we will not have another session already. Wala na tayo kayo. Kompleto na nato ang five sessions. But then, if naakay questions... Anytime, mag-message lang ka sa kuha. Ha? Okay, ma'am din. Mag-send lang ko, ma'am din, dito sa Google Classroom. Okay. 